number of ways. Thanks, Deputy Speaker. The question is that the document be noted, and I call the member for Dawson. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And I rise today to speak about the inquiry into the reinsurance pool uh, for the first report. I'd like to start by uh, acknowledging and thanking our chair, the member for <coughs> Lingari, uh, Marion, for her fine work and inclusivity of what she's done for this uh, report and indeed on how the chair runs the committee. I'd also like to thank the co-chair, Mr Warren Inch, for his uh, member for Leichhardt, for his uh, experience in this regard, and also all the members that are on the committee for their collaborative approach uh, to try to make this reinsurance pool as good as what it possibly can. So a little history lesson. So this started as a coalition initiative, uh, and it received bipartisan support uh, from the then opposition uh, Labor, Labor uh, Party, and has now, in the same spirit, been taken forward by the current Labor government and enjoys the support of the opposition. And the reason for this is it's so important, the insurance industry, and it's so important to our constituents that they can actually purchase insurance and purchase insurance at an affordable price. Because currently, the prices that they're paying in North Queensland and indeed in Northern Australia is just way too high and it's not acceptable. So we need to do something about that. And hopefully this reinsurance pool will work towards that. This is all about creating livability for our constituents, providing them with the comfort to make sure that they can insure their homes, insure their businesses, insure everything they do at a reasonable price, at an affordable price. Currently, we're paying circa two and a half times more in Northern Australia than what they are in southern Australia, and this is not sustainable, and it is certainly something that we needs to be addressed and needs to be addressed sooner rather than later. I'm sure uh, those opposite, like myself, have people coming to their offices and seeing them at markets and telling them, look, you know, I've had insurance premiums go up 30 per cent, and this is 30 per cent year on year, and this is just not acceptable and it's not sustainable. So what this has led to is some people doing self-insurance. Now, self-insurance might sound like not a bad idea, but what that's about is when people put that money aside, they were going to put in, uh, pay for premiums and put in a kitty, and then if they have something go wrong, take their money out. But unfortunately, what happens is priorities get in the way of that, and you might need a washing machine, new washing machine or your, your, your dryer blows up or something like that, so you end up spending that money and then in times of in need, uh, that money's not there. The other thing that people are coming to me about is the need for affordable insurance uh, because insurance premiums in the north have just gone through the roof. And as you would be aware, the only thing worse than really expensive premiums is not being offered insurance at all. And that is what's happening as well. We've got people in our area they are not being offered insurance at all. So the main objectives of this pool is to lower insurance premiums for households and small businesses with high cyclone and related flood damage by allowing insurers to reinsure cyclone risks at a lower cost than would be the case if insurers reinsure from the private market. The pool commenced its operation the 1st of July 2022. But unfortunately, many consumers are still waiting for their insurance providers to come on board. So large insurers have until the 31st of December 2023. And for those who have under 300 million, they have up until the 31st of December 2024. So we encourage these insurers to get on board. As of early as February this year, 2023, two insurers, so Allianz, Australia and Sure Insurance have joined the pool, but there is still 14 more to go. So why is this so important? Without affordable insurance in Northern Australia, people will simply not be able to live there. Businesses will be deterred from expanding and investors deterred from investing. Developers will not take on projects and banks will simply not finance 
projects that you can't get insurance for. This will cause rents to increase and will also exacerbate the housing problem. It's something that we cannot have. And this is for Northern Australia, the region that has 40 per cent of the land mass that contributes so much to our global, uh, to our Australia's finances, to our export dollars, through iron ore, through coal. This pool will cover 3.3 million households, 220,000 small businesses and 140,000 residential strata units. So in my electorate of Dawson, which is the biggest sugar growing region in, in the whole country, we need to keep people on their farms, we need to keep people in their houses, and how we can do this is to make sure that they can afford insurance. It's also the wintered salad bowl of Australia. So if you want people to continue to feed the nation, we need to make sure that they can live in Northern Australia and thrive. So again, it's something why we have to make sure that they can live there with affordable insurance. We have ports, bow and mangoes, cattle spread throughout, mining and in tourism. So if Australians are genuinely about growing Australia and if they're genuinely about making sure that we keep <coughs> all these people who are working in business actively and looking after Australia, then we need to make sure that we all work together collaboratively to make sure that we can give them the right insurance at the right price. So the Joint Select Committee of the Northern Australia, which I'm a proud member of, has started the inquiry last October and has had, about, had some implementations and we've made recommendations to improve the scheme rollout over the next few years. The committee has made numerous recommendations. However, in view of the evidence given during the inquiry, the, the committee considered it premature to recommend significant changes because we didn't want to have time delays. We need to let this insurance pool start. We need to let the insurers be involved and encourage more people to be involved so then the savings can start to be followed through. We didn't want to put extra changes or more impediments uh, on the insurers to make their life more difficult. So next steps for this. So the main, like I've said before, the major insurers will be on board by the end of December 2023. We need to encourage all the second tier insurers to get involved and be on board by December 2024. So after this, in about 12 months' time, it will be up to the chair, to, we need to review. We need to have a look at exactly where we are in this whole scheme of things. We need to make sure we see how effective that the reinsurance pool is, because it's so important we get this right to bring down the prices of insurance at North Queensland. So I'm committed to fighting re to reduce all insurance premiums, be it household, business, marine or strata. I think we can particularly do more in those last segments. But let's start off with what we're doing and then tweak it, make some adjustments from there and then make sure we can continue building on this. And then I'd like to tackle the public liability. It's something that our tourism operators are facing each and every day when they take people out for adventure tourism in particular. They take them out for fantastic experiences and that's what we have in Australia. We have lots of experiences that people can go out there, uh, enjoy the Great Barrier Reef, enjoy our beaches, enjoy the mountain walks, uh, the natural uh, wildlife that we have, the natural flora and fauna. And we just need to make sure that our tourism industry can afford to do that. So let's have a good look into the public liability and uh, see what we can do for that. And it's for those, re those reasons, Deputy Speaker, I commend this report to the House. It's a very good report. And I would like to, again, thank my committee members for the way you've interacted and the way that you've worked together. And let's make sure that we bring down
the cost of insurance premiums for Northern Australia. Here, here. I call the member for Reid. I move that the 